Okay, welcome back to our study of evil from the Bible. We pick up today a new category. We're up to our category number seven. And we've got 23 categories. We did adjective, bad deed, criminal and capital punishment, good is evil and evil is good, good versus evil, the heart, now today we pick up in only five categories, innocent or innocent involving evil. Sometimes evil is in the case of innocence. I have done nothing wrong. So why am I being treated as such? When no one treats, when one treats one with evil for doing right and proper. Sometimes evil is a case of innocence. I've done nothing wrong. So why am I being treated as so? When one has been treated with evil, for they're doing right and proper. Now, what someone may also may say, well, that's not fair. First Samuel twenty five twenty eight. Interesting study. I hope you find this this evil is in the Bible. Now, this is not all the evil words in the Bible, but it's much. First Samuel twenty five twenty eight. I pray thee, forgive the trespass of thy handmaid, for the Lord will certainly make my Lord a sure help, because my Lord fighteth the battles of the Lord. And evil has not been found in thee all thy days. Now this is Abigail speaking to David. David was found with no evil activity. But when requested food and supplies for his men, Nabal completely rejected. And it goes to tell us that David's army protected the shepherds and herdmen of Nabal. And while they were conversing back and forth, they were protected. Evidently, there was an, an enemy that would show up or people of no interest in Nabal. And the protection of David and his men were not paid for. So the evil that David got was the rejection of services which in quite frankly he deserved and in the workplace as you turn to first samuel 29 6 someone else gets the credit for a job you've done you don't get what you deserve for a job done But we've got to remember that there's a there's a judgment seat of Christ. And there's a great white throne judgment coming. And God will render all evil to those that deserve the evil and got good. And God will render the good that got evil that deserved to be good. God will balance it all out. You say, what if you lock a man in prison? He's, he's innocent. Yes, it can happen. And God will weigh it out. But let me ask you a question as you turn to 1 Samuel 29.6. If God were to right now, in the evil that we got, we're doing good. Could not God slam the hammer down? On other evil things and guilty things we are a party to. I didn't get what I deserve. Well, let me ask you a question. What if God slammed the hammer down and you did get what you deserve?
that there is no mercy or grace of God, and there is. So we got to think, when, when, when we get rewarded evil, and we're not guilty, we're guilty of something else. But that didn't catch up on us. Here David's spoken about what we just read. David's innocent and he didn't get. First Samuel 29, 6. And then Achish called David and said to him, Surely, as the Lord liveth, thou hast been upright. Thy going out and thy coming in with me, and the host is good in my sight. For I have not found evil in thee since the days of thy coming out unto this day. Nevertheless, the Lord favor thee not. David wants to go into battle. Achish's army says no. The Philistines say no. Do you realize David is now on the side of the enemies of Israel? And he wants to go into battle against Israel? And King Saul and Jonathan are going to die in this battle. How come I didn't get a chance to fight? God is protecting you, David. Because when you get on the throne, unlike the lies of Shimei, no one will be able to say it was David's arrow, it was David's stone, it was David's sword that killed King Saul and Jonathan because they would be actually fighting another battle for his wives and his uh, soldiers' wives and they're good. The Bible says, I will curse them that curse you. Had David gone to battle, he would have been cursed because he would be fighting against the Lord's anointed. Sometimes when when we're not allowed to do something. And we're, we've been found to be faithful. As David was. May we have not been doing what is partaking. Maybe we have no business being involved. Maybe it's God protecting us. How come I didn't get to go there? Well, God's protection. Matthew 27, 23. So, innocent, and I didn't get what I deserved, but we could have got what we deserved by being guilty. I didn't get to go and I've done nothing wrong not to go, but it's God's protection that you didn't go. Matthew 27, 23, and the governor said, Why? What evil hath he done? But they cried out the more, saying, Let him be crucified. Now the, ch the charges were upon Jesus. What evil did Jesus do? Nothing. He was sinless. Why does Jesus going to be crucified when he was innocent and declared three times, I find no fault in him? Well, to put it in a nutshell, Jesus Christ didn't go to the cross and did not suffer and die in that cross. I would not be going to heaven. There would be no salvation of God if man If Pilate would have let Jesus go that afternoon and crucified Barabbas. Here's a man, God, completely innocent, sinless, no guilt. And he suffered and died for man who is the guilty one. So the next time you think, well, I didn't get what I deserved. I did nothing wrong. 
Jesus Christ did nothing wrong and he got suffering and death and a painful death. Well, I've been good. How come I can't go? Jesus was good and he went all the way to Calvary and into hell. Acts 23 9. Again, life is not fair. I got rights. Says only American. And even in America, your rights are dying. That's why America wants to stick to their, their parties. They want to stick to the Constitution. Because they know life. Without the American government protecting them in the pursuit of life, liberty, and justice for all, be not deceived, God is not mocked. Whatsoever man soweth, that he shall also reap. That there might be a crime against me, and woe be if I can't get a lawyer. Friend, there are places in this world, past, present, and still to come. Innocent people have been charged and there's been no lawyers. There's been no judges. There are people today, presently, who are being killed by other religions for the only sole purpose of the word of God and the testimony of Jesus Christ. That's church history. And they've done nothing amiss. Acts 23, 9. And there arose a great cry. And the scribes that were of the Pharisees part rose and strove, saying, we, fi we find no evil in this man, Paul. But if a spirit or angel has spoken to him, let us not fight against God. Paul was found of no guilty activity. Yet he went back to jail. And yet he was in chains. And yet his own people, the Pharisees, still many did not believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. The suffering disciple of Paul the apostle, when he was innocent. Oh, he's the one that wrote, All they that live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. He's the one that wrote, Have I become your enemy because I told you the truth? Wouldn't it be John, his counterpart, say, Marvel not the world hates you? Is it not Jesus say, Know that the world hated me first before it hated you? A true Bible Christian, innocent, and living to what the Word of God says, you're going to suffer, and you're going to suffer innocently. That's the way of life. That was the life of Jesus in Matthew 27. That's the life of all 12 apostles, 13 being Paul. The very first chapter of, of Fox's Book of Martyrs is the recorded lives and death brutality of the apostles of the Lamb. And then go read the rest of the book of Fox's Book of Martyrs, how people died in the name of Jesus Christ, including women and children. This life ain't fair. Especially to a Christian. I don't mean a Christian, you know, the Catholic Church Christian. And I'm not talking about a Christian that doesn't do nothing. He's saved, but he, that's it. That's all he is. How about me? 
I, I preach on the street Saturday here at the Farmer's Market in Daytona Beach, Florida. How come on a public sidewalk I cannot use an amplification system when they hired a DJ? And they shut me up. And I come home on a Saturday night and I got to listen to my neighbors with stereo, big old speakers, blasting. And it's supposed to be turned off at 10 p.m. at night, but it goes on, you know, 12, 1, 2 o'clock in the morning. How come the police can shut up the preacher? But they can't shut up the preacher's neighbors. That's not right. Yeah, well, it's Saturday night, so I'm trying to go to sleep and go to bed for church in the morning. Yeah, this is not right. Welcome to the world. James 1.13. This is the last one. This is a short one today. Let no man say when he is tempted, I am tempted of God, for God cannot be tempted with evil, neither tempteth he any man. God cannot ever be tempted with evil, so he's always innocent. God cannot, will not, is unable, and will never ever tell a lie. God will not, cannot ever sin, and he's holy and righteous always. And I'm sorry to see one of my unsaved friends go from Facebook. But his charges are always witnessing to him. How come God don't stop the murders? How come God don't stop the killing? How come God doesn't stop the violence? How come God can't do this? How come God can't do that? And he would not ever get to the point, it's not God, it's man. Today, all the violence in graveyards and hospitals and police stations and alcohol and jails and tobacco products and sin and rape and murder and child molestation and fathers walking out on their families began the day that Eve took a bite of that fruit. When God told them, or God told Adam, and Adam was to tell her, which she did know something, Thou shalt not eat of the fruit of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil. It's funny because when you check Job chapter 1, if you get a tornado, hurricane, or something as such, insurance companies call it an act of God. And yet the whirlwind that took down the house that killed Job's sons and daughters were of the devil, Job chapter 1. The fire that came down from heaven that killed part of his flock was of the devil, Job chapter 1. The, the boils, the health problems of Job didn't come from God, it came from the devil, Job chapter 2. God is up in heaven innocently like, you, you see what they're blaming me for? And that blame is constant through the Bible. Sarai blames God for her barrenness. Well, it could have been true, but... Adam blames Eve, Eve blames the serpent. And in God, there is absolutely no sin at all. And you know what? God is still falsely charged with evil. And if you've done any witnessing, if you talk to anybody about God, you will come in your life, I guarantee, 
you will talk to someone that said God murders, war, destruction. Yeah, it may be God. It may also be the devil. It may be man's sin. It may be, you know, the flooding. It may be because the man made the damn wrong. Oh, the torrential rain. Maybe man was a terrible place to build your city. Next time, Lord willing, the judgment of God.